it's so good to be here today. It's good to be back with you all. And this is the final night of, uh, of our trip here, my wife and I. And then we go home back to our son. And then we're heading off to South Africa. And then we go back home. Then we're heading off somewhere else. And so we are so, but can I just say something? Of, we probably travel to one or two nations a month. But my favorite by far is Nigeria. And, and I say that not just because I'm Nigerian. I say it genuinely because the hunger for the prophetic here out accelerates anything my wife and I have ever seen anywhere in the earth. And we're so glad uh, that you have welcomed and received uh, the prophets and the prophetic again. Why do I say that? Because I actually believe the prophetic has a lot to apologize for. I believe it's married some people buried some people, sent some people places they didn't want to go, made some people eat grass, <laughs> amen, um, searched people on Facebook before they gave prophecies, all of these things. And so, you know, 90% um, of my job is apologizing for what the prophetic has done and the damage that it has caught. But just as I said yesterday, I say again today, we don't throw out the real because of the fake. In fact, the fake is evidence that the real exists. And if we are focused and keyed in, we'll have access to that. How many can prophesy? Wave at me. How many can prophesy? Good. That's, that's, that's a couple of you. How many can hear God's voice? Wave at me. You can hear God's voice. Wave at me. Just a couple of you again. Do me, I always do this, just do me a favor, take a deep breath in, everybody, one, two, three, in, and at the top of your lungs, just go, bah, that's good, that means every one of you qualifies, why? The Bible says in John chapter 15, my sheep hear my voice, how many can hear God's voice now, wave at me, that's good, every born again New Testament believer can and should hear the voice of God. Now, I want to lay some foundation today because I believe that many of you came here tonight to receive a prophecy. And I, I want to give you some good news. You're going home with a prophecy. It's just not coming from me. Look at the person next to you and smile and tell them, my next word is coming from you tonight. Amen. Amen. The reason I believe that the Holy Ghost has called this conference shift is because now the prophetic gets to shift over to you and you get to be some of the ones that get to move in the anointing of the Spirit of God to prophesy. Amen. So we're going to minister tonight, we're going to preach tonight, we're going to demonstrate tonight, and then we're going to prophesy tonight, and then we're going to sign some books. How many of you have got Eat, Sleep, Prophesy, Repeat? How many of you got it? Just a couple of you. Really? You know, people say to me, and every, people write me on Instagram, I can't tell you how many Instagram messages I get from people saying, please, please, mentor me. Mentor me. I need a spiritual father, and it's you. First of all, no. Second of all, Second of all, if you want mentorship, buy my book. There's Mentorship 101 right there. Why do I say no? Not because I'm cruel, not because I don't want to mentor you. I actually believe that discipleship without proximity is a fan club. And if I'm going to disciple you, I want to walk hand in hand with you. I want to be able to, to, to rub shoulders with you. I don't believe in social media discipleship. I believe when Jesus said, follow me, he didn't mean on Twitter. Oh, come on. Don't shout me down because I'm teaching good. I believe that's what he meant. And so I believe in genuine, heartfelt, one-on-one -on -one discipleship. I'm not an elite prophet. It's not my assignment. It's not my anointing. I'm not one that says I have all the secrets of the kingdom. And if you want them, when I finish today, I'm going to close the door and walk out a back room somewhere and be in a special closet for only God's anointed. No, I believe all the Lord's people are anointed and that the Spirit of God wants to put his spirit on every single one of you. And the good news is there is no junior Holy Spirit. Isn't that good? 
There is no junior Holy Spirit. That means you can get just as strong a word from here as you can get from the person sitting next to you. Even if they're practicing, the Holy Spirit is not practicing. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? And so we're going to turn this into a little bit of a teaching, but also a little bit of a school of prophets so that we can, we can pull out the prophetic on the inside of you. Then I'm going to lay hands. I haven't laid hands here before, but I'm going to lay hands. I got told off uh, by one of my uncles. He said, Tommy, you don't lay hands, and yet you tell us we're all called to prophesy, but you don't impart anything. So I want to release an impartation. And let me tell you something. Those of you who haven't dreamed or seen visions before, you're getting ready to dream and see visions like you've never seen before. That's one of the anointings on my life. People say, since you prayed for me, I just can't stop dreaming and seeing visions. That's part of what the prophetic gets to do. But let me just share something very quickly because of time. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says, From the days of John the Baptist, who was John a prophet, from the days of John the Baptist until the present time. Until what? The present time. What do we mean by the present time? We mean the 25th of February 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. From the days of John the Baptist until today, the kingdom of heaven has been, another translation says, forcefully advancing. This is good news. Can I tell you why it's good news? Because God is winning. Nigeria, God is winning. Nigeria God is winning. He's not losing. He's not sitting up there going, oh my goodness, I can't believe APC, PDP, and ABC won. God's not sitting there scratching his head going, I can't believe this happened. The good news is God is winning. Why? Because God's kingdom is forcefully advancing. Not weekly, not woefully, not even Sunday time advancing. God's kingdom is every single day advancing. We think the kingdom advances only on Sunday. No, God's kingdom is Monday to Sunday, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, forcefully advancing. And let me tell you something about God. God has no retreat mechanism in him. God never retreats. Look at the person next to you and say, God never retreats. Find somebody who looks less suspicious and tell them, God never retreats. For God, retreat is not an option. It is non-optional. It is not a button in his mind. It is not a bone in his body. Men may retreat. The church may retreat. But God will always forcefully advance. Somebody do this. Oh, that's good, brother. Oh, we're making a beatbox now. I'm about to drop a beat, Tamar. My wife's like, don't do it, please. Okay. God's kingdom is like a steam train. It's never retreating. It's never stopping. It's always going forward. The question is Nigeria. The question is church. When God's kingdom is advancing, what are you doing? God's kingdom is so advancing. What does a forceful advancing kingdom look like? A forcefully advancing kingdom looks like this. God will use anyone. Look at your neighbor and say, anyone. Look at your other neighbor say, anyone, good or bad, say good or bad, to advance his kingdom. God will use anyone, good or bad, to advance his kingdom. And the misconception of the church for years, you have been taught the wrong lesson. You have been taught that the kingdom is inside the church. The kingdom is not inside the church. The church 
is inside the kingdom. Are you getting something? God's kingdom, God's church is inside God's kingdom. Good people are inside of the kingdom. Bad people are inside of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? The kingdom is for anybody, good or bad. Now let me give you an example of this. The Bible says that one day there was a Greek woman and she comes to Jesus and she begs Jesus and she says, Jesus, please, would you heal my daughter? And Jesus ignores her. The Bible says she starts off begging and Jesus ignores her. And then she starts worshiping and Jesus turns around and he looks at her and he says, it is not right for me to give the children's food to a dog. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, what Jesus was trying to say to this woman was that she is not a child of God. She is not inside of the covenant, for Christ did not come to the world initially. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So here comes this Greek woman trying to get a healing, and healing doesn't belong to the world. She said, he said, I can't give what belongs to the children of God and go serve it to the dog. But this woman said something. That if the church would understand, we would sit up real quick. She said, yes, I understand that. But even a dog knows how to position itself. So what the church doesn't want. Who am I talking to today? So what the church doesn't want, the dogs will eat the crumbs. And I sat there and I said, God, do you mean that people in the world can prosper from crumbs? And we, the church, have the whole land. There are worldly people getting blessed off of crumbs. We have the whole loaf, but nobody healed in the church. Nobody can get blessed in the church. Nobody can come together in the church. Why? Because is it possible that we've got familiar with a God we barely even know? Listen to me. In the book of, I want to tell you very quickly, I've been sharing this across these four days. I'm going to say it again. Where are we right now on God's calendar prophetically? That's what everybody should be asking themselves. The most powerful people on the face of planet Earth today are not people who get another prophecy. They're people who can find themselves on God's prophetic calendar right now. When Jesus opens the book and he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel and then he closed the book. That was the moment Jesus found himself in the text on God's prophetic calendar and he became the most powerful person in the room at that moment. When in the book of Acts, they opened up and Peter stood up and said, we're not drunk as you presume. This is what the Lord spoke about. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. When God is speaking in the book of Joshua, the Bible says, now let me show you where you are on God's calendar right now. You are no longer, Nigeria, in Passover. The Spirit of God says you are now in crossover. When you were in Passover, you were in slavery and bondage. When you were in Passover, you were under rule, under empire spirits, under British colonialization. But can I tell you something? Now you are in crossover You are no longer in Egypt. You are now at the Jordan and you're getting ready to step into your promise. 
And yet some of you may be saying, well, God, if that's true, why am I still where I'm at? Why am I still going around the same circle? Why is my nation still voting for the wrong people? Why? Because God will leave you in a wilderness to decide whether you want to go forward or whether you want to go backwards. And I believe sitting in this room today is a prophetic people who are tired of going around the same mountain and they're saying, God, it's now time for us to forcefully advance your kingdom. Now, what does a forceful kingdom advancement look like? Forceful advancement kingdom looks like breaking up with all covenant relationships just to step into jealously what the Spirit of God has for you. I'll give you an example. Ruth and, and Orpah, all of a sudden their husbands die. We all know the story in the book of Ruth. And Naomi, their mother-in-law, is left with herself. She's lost her husband. Now there are three widows all living in a desperate situation. But she heard in Israel, God had visited his people. In other words, there was now a crossover season that she was getting ready to step into. And let me tell you something. In crossover season you get connected to your Boaz and Boaz means to quicken Boaz means to accelerate that means everything that was delayed before in crossover there is such a payback that comes upon you that the Spirit of God accelerates your time but and here's the but in order for you to cross over Nigeria, you must be willing to accept that there are people who you love who don't want to cross over. One amen, I'll take it. You have to accept that there are people you love and you care about but all they want to talk about is Egypt. You see, the Bible says when Naomi heard of this new visitation, Orpah said, I'm coming with you. Ruth said, I'm coming with you. Naomi said, no, guys, stay here. I can't take care of you. I got nothing for you. Stay here. And the Bible says, Orpah stayed, Ruth clave. In other words, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. You can be sitting right next to somebody who you love and care about, and they have the same language as you do. You both speak kingdom, but kingdom is not what you speak. Kingdom is what you do. So you can go to churches that say we're kingdom, we're kingdom, we're kingdom, and they're not kingdom, they're just empire guys as kingdom. Orpah and Ruth spoke the same language, and that's the confusion because the kingdom of heaven is like chaff and wheat, and they both look the same. They both sound the same. They both praise the same. They both shout the same. They both say hallelujah. The only difference is one's hallelujah is rehearsed. Because when it comes time to actually do kingdom and not just talk kingdom, Orpah stays and Ruth Cleaves. Are you hearing this? Why? Why? Let me tell you something. If you are going to cross over, you have to be Ruth. Ruth is ruthless. Ruth grew up with Orpah. They watched Netflix together. 
they, 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 they did their hair. They braided their hair together. They, they, they attached their crochet in. How hardly were my sisters at together. They talked whilst they're doing their hair about how all men are the same, honey. Let me tell you something about men. And they're talking and they, 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 they're spirit sisters. They hashtag together. Spirit sisters. They do selfies and they share the same Instagram page and they love each other for when it's time to advance the kingdom. I've got to go. This Jesus didn't have 12 disciples, he had thousands. Thousands that I'll follow you. Let me go and bury my dad. And Jesus said, let the dead. You want to forcefully advance my kingdom. You got to let go of your opus. If you want Boaz, I said this before, you have to be willing to let go of Brokaz. Lying ass, cheating ass, dumb ass, stupid ass, beat your ass, just to get to Boaz. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. I am a little crazy. There are people who are in altar churches. Oh, you say, oh, this is what prophets do. Prophets prophesy our names, our surnames. Our... That's not prophets. We prophets, we deal in truth and transformation. I don't, all this you've made us out to be about, tell me about my name and my surname and my dog's name. I, we can do that another day. Now we've got to get you into advancing the kingdom. You know your name. You don't need me to tell you. When are we going to forcefully advance the kingdom? When are we going to move from where we are to where God wants us to be? Can I tell you why? Because if you don't do it, Elijah said, God, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. And God said, no, you ain't. Who do you think you are? Sitting there talking about, I, God, I know you called me, but I'm just scared. I'm just scared. Let me give you another definition of fear, self-centeredness. Oh, God, I know you've called me, but I'm too afraid. I know you've sent me, but God, I'm just scared. I'm just scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I, 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 me. When the attention is on you, of course you'll be afraid. When you think you're the one that's going to do it, of course you'll be afraid. I know I'm not getting any amens today. That's okay. No, when the amens go down, it means you're doing a good job. You have to understand. Because you're breaking the rehearsals. Let me, let me, let me explain something to you. God looked at Elijah and said, I got 7,000. Look at the person next to you and say, if you won't do it, God has 7,000 replacements for you. Say if you look at them and say if you're still hanging on to Jar Fool and Justin's Tim's are fake and Tyra bankrupt and all your little cutesy people, you'll never advance the kingdom. Nigeria, you're no longer in Egypt. Stop rehearsing it. Oh, Egypt was so terrible. Oh, Egypt. Oh, it was so much bondage. Oh, our spiritual leaders, how they controlled us, how they broke our hearts. I don't want a father anymore. I don't need a spiritual father. I'm just going to be me, myself, and I and do it by myself. Oh, oh, it's so terrible. Do you want to talk about Egypt or do you want to talk about Canaan? 
because if you want to talk about Canaan, you can stop circling the same mountain, stop baiting the same pools, stop having the same spiritual fathers who break your heart over and over again. But what do you want to talk about? Because whatever you rehearse, you'll relive. Over and over again. Don't ask me, ask your neighbor, they'll tell you. Do you want to move on or do you want to talk about you? Let me tell you why, let me tell you why. Because this, Nigeria, if this doesn't make you annoyed, I don't know what will. When God was getting ready to cross over into Canaan, Joseph was camped outside of Jericho for seven days. And there was crossover and God shows up to Joshua and he says, Moses, my servant is dead. In other words, the old way things used to go is over. The prophet that led you out is gone. The old denominational system is dead. It's all over. And I've got to tell you now because you've got to grieve it and get over it. And then it says the way you are going you have never been this way before. So if you're looking for a model behind you, you're never going to get it. Oh, I like this excitement. You don't understand. Never! It's dead. It's gone. It's over. So what do we do? They camp for seven days. They're waiting. Oh, God, give us strategy. They're praying, God, give us, give us something we can do to break forward, to forcefully advance your kingdom in Nigeria. And all of a sudden, the captain of the army of the host of the Lord shows up with a sword drawn out in his hand. And how do I know that this was a type of Christ? Because the Bible says when Joshua saw him, he worshipped him. And Revelation says we don't worship the angels. So Yeshua HaMashiach showed up to Yeshua, son of none. There was a Yeshua showdown. And he shows up with a sword in his hand. And look at this. The sword is not drawn at Jericho. The sword is drawn at Joshua. And Joshua is on the other end of this sword. And he's saying, hang on, God. Whose side are you on? Are you for us? Or against us? And God says, neither. What's this? Are you PDP or ABC? And God says, neither. What's this? Are you Christian or Muslim? And God says, neither because God is not limited to using you to get breakthrough he wants to use you but he's not limited to you because we think God is Christian and the world is secular but yet on the other side of the wall God has a prostitute in Passover God led you through a prophet in crossover God leads you through a prostitute watch this a hooker became their hooker I'm getting excited all by myself I'm going to have church with just me right now a hooker became their hookup. Why? Because God will use anyone, good or bad, to forcefully advance his kingdom. He'll use a Muslim if he wants to. He'll use a Christian if he wants to. He'll use Pharaoh if he wants to. He'll use Nebuchadnezzar if he wants to. 
Because my God isn't limited to man's ideologies. And listen to me, Nigeria. The Lord said this. There are many of you who are saying, God, give us a Christian leader. Give us a Christian leader and we'll be okay. You can have a Christian stupid leader. Don't, don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm still going to preach like this anyway. I'm going home tomorrow. So I'll preach the same way anyhow. You can look at me the, any way you, I'm preaching. God said, when you go to Nigeria, tell them this. Do not try to rehab my Rahabs. Yeah, because what's going on in America right now is they cried out for a Christian and God gave them a Trump. He gave them a Rahab. And they're like, what is this heathen doing on the on the throne? He says he's a Christian, but he's not. Can I tell you something? Stop asking God for a Christian and start asking God for a Cyrus. Because a Cyrus, according to Isaiah 45, a Cyrus doesn't know God. But God knows a Cyrus. How is that possible? The Bible says in the book of James, how be it that Rahab the prostitute was considered righteous? How can a woman who sleeps around for a living be considered righteous? I have lost the church. Half of you just looking like, who is this crazy man? How can a, how? can a hooker, how can a hooker, she makes money from sleeping around. And yet the book of James says she was considered righteous for what she did. You see, the church, all we want to do is talk. All we want to do is shout. All we want to do is say, hallelujah, preach, preacher. But the Bible says, if you're hearers of the word and not doers, you're just deceiving yourself. All we're doing is playing church. But until we go from being hearers to being doers, God will raise up Rahabs whilst the church is just playing church. The song we sing, if you don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. And the conclusion is, I don't want a rock crying out for me. Nigeria, let me just share this with you very quickly. You are not failing because of corruption. Because England has corrupt, we just more organized than you. We're just more institutionalized. You're not failing because of corruption. You're not failing because of a lack of resources. You have oil. You have just discovered you have gas. You have minerals. Why is it that we're failing? We're not failing because of a lack of resources. We're failing because of a lack of resourcefulness. When you put a Nigerian in Nigeria, something happens. But when you put a Nigerian in the UK, they succeed. Why? Because too much resources can damage resourcefulness. Nigeria, you have too much church. How can we have too much church? It's not possible. How can this man say we have too much church? There is never enough church. There's too much church. You have more churches than influence. Everybody, listen to me. 
You don't realize something. It took God one day to get Israel out of Egypt. It took him 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. So we've left the empire and now we're building empire. We've left the empire and now we're building empire churches, empire ministries. I need to plant a thousand churches. Why? To what end? Because if Egypt is still in you, God will leave you wandering a wilderness. You know, somebody asked, somebody told me, tell me you could be Nigeria's prophet. I said, I don't want to be Nigeria's prophet. It's too small an ambition. I want to restore Nigeria's prophet. My dear friend here said it. He said, when Itahosa died, there was a void in the atmosphere. Why? Because everybody wanted one prophet. Every one prophet. Oh, when's prophet Tommy coming back? When's prophet? When's he coming? We don't need one prophet anymore. We need so many prophets that the enemy tries one, he can't get them. Then there's more right behind him. We need prophetic voices. It's time for a shift. So, this is it. This is where I close. What is your greatest resource, Nigerians? I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what your greatest resource is and why I love Nigeria so much. Nigeria, you can be poor in the UK and succeed. Why? Because. Look at this. Look at this. This is the last thing I'm going to say. God gave the children of Israel the wealth of Egypt in a second. Every Egyptian woman came with their silver and their gold and gave it to the children of Israel. And the Bible says, and he destroyed Egypt in that day. Look at this. So they leave with the wealth. And you think they're going to Herod's. But God drops them off in a desert. What good is wealth in a wilderness? Hello? Why do I have wealth in a wilderness? And God answered the question. I fed you with manna because you couldn't shop for food. And so I caused bread to come out of the sky because I wanted to show you something. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth, not the book. The mouth of God. That means your greatest resource is the prophetic word. So in the book of Matthew, Jesus comes to some apostles and he says, Who do you say I am? Some say you're John, some say you're this. Peter. Who do you say I am? In Matthew 16, 18, he said, you're Christ, the son of the living God. And he covers his mouth like, where did I get that from? Oh, he didn't get it reading the Bible. We must read the Bible. It's important. But the Bible says, you, woe to you religious people. You search the text thinking that in it you may find me. I'm going to mess you up. We must read the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. But look at this. 
said, but are you Simon, son of Jonah? Because flesh and blood. You didn't get this in theology school. You didn't get this on TBN regurgitation. You didn't get this just by somebody else's teaching. My father in heaven is communicating with you through revelation. Then he says, on this rock, what rock? Revelation. I'm going to build an institution. Not an organization, an organism. And the sign of this organism is that the gates of hell will never enter a nation again because the house of revelation is on the scene. When we lose the prophetic in the church, we have lost the purpose of the church. The church becomes a museum when the voice of God leaves. So people say, oh, oh, let me just make, I got my healing ministry at Bethel, got that tool on my tool belt. I got my deliverance ministry, got that tool on my tool belt. Come to tell me to get my prophetic tool belt ministry. The prophetic is not another tool on your tool belt. The prophetic is the foundation of the New Testament church. It is your DNA. That doesn't mean you're all going to be prophets by office. It means sheep hear my voice. Not they hear it through Tommy. No. I cried to God when I came and I said, Coming to my hotel room, I said, God, I don't want to become the nation's guru. The Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you. And the same Holy Ghost that speaks to Tony is the same Holy Ghost that speaks to you. I don't want any self. I have no agenda here but to see God's kingdom come to Nigeria. And his will be done. I'm not here to build Tommy or Raimi Ministries. I'm not here to build a monument. I'm here to build living stones. That's what excites me when I come back and I hear 30 say we've done prophetic things and so many things are shifting and shaking in the earth. So in the book of Acts, Jesus finishes off the scripture. And the apostles are gathered in Jerusalem. He says, tarry there, wait for my promise. For you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Somebody say, when does my international ministry begin? When you learn to wait for the promise. For the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost fully came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there was a tempest flat. Tongues of fire settled on every single one of them. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And if we are not careful, we will think that the Pentecostal church got birth there. No. The book of Acts was not about birthing the Pentecostal church. Peter stood up and said, no, we're not drunk as you presume. And this isn't about shaking over on the floor and catching fire. No, this is what Joel spoke about. That in these end times, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men see visions. Even on the house help. I'm going to pour out my 
my Holy Ghost and they're going to prophesy. Why? Because the Holy Ghost ends the monopoly on revelation being held in the hands of an elite few. I want to put a different hunger in you today. Tell me why are you preaching like this? I want to put a different hunger in you. Hunger saying, if I just get to that meeting and if, if I just look at him, give him contact, he's going to prophesy to me. The hunger I want to put in you is, God, make me a prophet. God, Saul came into the company of the prophets and he became a different person. Transform me in your presence so I can hear your voice for myself. Oh, when you're hungry like that, I promise you he will fill you with his Holy Spirit.